Hi, Hobby friends. Today we go right back to the beginning and start a new series of videos. My plan for this Mini Painting 101 course is to make the most foolproof and accessible introduction to mini painting I possibly can. And for the more seasoned painter, there might be some tips or tricks that you missed along the way, and as we get deeper into the course, we will be looking at colour theory and technique. Right, we have a lot to get through in this first video, so let's get stuck in. Today we are talking about gear. We can split our gear into, broadly speaking, two categories, modelling and painting. The modelling stuff is to make our minis and the painting stuff is to paint it. In this video we will be concentrating on the equipment you need to buy to start making and painting run-of-the-mill plastic miniatures. I've gone with plastic miniatures because I think that's probably what most beginners will be buying, but if you want to see a video about resin or metal miniatures, let me know in the comments down below. Item 1 on our list is a mini. It hopefully won't come as too much of a shock to know that one of the essential things you need to start mini painting is a miniature. The main reason I've included such an obvious thing in the list is to give me an opportunity to talk briefly about how to choose your first miniature. People get into this hobby for all sorts of reasons. Because they want to play war games, because they want to explore the lore of a given universe, because they want to express some kind of creativity, or just because they think the war dollies are kind of cool. But unless you're getting into this hobby for the most extreme competitive play, the best advice I can give you is buy a miniature that inspires you. You might be super excited and want to buy a full 2000 point army off the bat, but let me tell you, the internet is littered with people who did that and when they got started realised how time consuming this hobby can be and got completely burnt out. On the other hand, some people want to try and save all the good minis until they become a better painter somehow, and for those people I have to say, you can always repaint it, and the only way you're going to get to be that good mini painter is by starting painting now. And the thing that's going to motivate you to start painting now is to get minis that inspire you. The only caveat I might add to this is you do probably want to save the really big and complicated miniatures until you're a little further along in your painting journey. We're talking about the huge centerpiece models like monsters and primarchs and that sort of thing. Either a box of your given army's troop choice or a generic unnamed HQ are usually the sweet spot for getting started. But above all else, forget the rules and all that stuff and buy something you think looks cool. Ok, next up we need some way of getting the mini off of those plastic frames we call sprues and into little bits we can glue together to make the model. For that we will want snips, aka nippers, aka sprue cutters. If you're the kind of person that wants all the best gear from the get-go and you have money to burn, you can pick up a pair of these. Dispi... Dispi... Dspi... I don't know how to say this, but the point is, is they are very, very nice nippers that give you super clean results. They are, however, pretty expensive, and there's absolutely no reason why you can't start your hobbying journey with a pair of cheap, small wire cutters or nippers. Hop onto an online retailer of your choice and search for sprue cutters, or better yet, go to a local hobby shop and see what they have in store there. Top tip. Don't buy GW tools. Their stuff is really expensive and they try and upsell you on things that frankly you just do not need. Mold line cleaners? No thank you. Which segues nicely into our next bit of gear, a hobby knife. We will need this to clean up the model after we've snipped it out of the sprue, and even the newest, shiniest models from the bestest, newest mould still have mould lines, little seams that run around them, and you are obliged to clean those up. The best tool for that job is a hobby knife, and it will come in super useful for all sorts of other jobs as well. Lots of people, myself included, also use sanding sticks to clean mould lines, but to be honest I think when you're starting just getting a hobby knife is more than enough. These Exacto hobby knives are my recommendation. They are cheap, the blade doesn't move, and the blade is also really easy to change out, which is something you're going to want to do pretty regularly. 
The product to skip for this job is any knife with a movable blade or the big giant blades we call Stanley knives in the UK. If you're a young blood watching this video, in fact, no, scrap that. If you're a person of any age watching this video, please note that these knives are very, very sharp and therefore very, very dangerous. Young people, you need to go find an adult to help you with the cutting and adults, you need to be really careful and not end up with stitches. We'll go into how to use all the tools in this video properly and safely in future videos, so do stick around for the rest of the course. Okay, we're almost done with the essential modeling gear now. Next up, we need to get sticky. The glue we want to use with plastics is plastic glue. When I was a miniature mini hobbyist, we used to call this stuff polystyrene cement, but I never see that name anywhere anymore, so probably best just to look for plastic glue. Plastic glue actually melts the plastic and fuses it together, so it is by far the best way to get good solid bonds with our plastic miniatures. My favourite plastic glue is this stuff, Tamiya Super Thin, and I am not alone in this, it is a very popular glue across the hobby. If you wanted to be really economical, you could buy this stuff instead, the Tamiya Airbrush Cleaner, since the formulation of this is almost exactly the same as the glue. But you will want the little applicator brush that comes in the lid of the official glue pot, so maybe for your first purchase, just buy the bottle of glue instead. And if you can't find Tamiya Super Thin near you, don't worry, any plastic glue will do. But as the name suggests, plastic glue only works on plastic, in fact only certain kinds of plastic, so for everything else we're going to need a different kind of glue. Enter cyanoacrylate, better known as superglue. Superglue is a must-have product for every hobby desk and you should probably also pick up an accelerator like this whilst you're at it too. This glue comes in millions of different types, every variety of viscosity and applicator. But the best advice I can give you when you're getting started out is find whatever you can get easily and cheaply near you and go with that. You can save your esoteric glue preferences until you've built an army or two. The last glue on this list is non-essential, but it's really cheap, so you might as well pick some up. We call it PVA in the UK, but I know it's also known as white glue and probably a million other names as well. You get it at DIY shops or hobby stores, and it is useful for all sorts of things, but for us it's mostly for gluing basing material down onto the bases. Here is something that if I don't mention, people will probably pull me up on. Gap filler. You have two basic choices here, milliput or green stuff, both of which are two-part epoxy clays. This stuff, in the right hands, can build an entire miniature from scratch, but when we're starting out we're just going to use it to fill the gaps in our pre-made miniatures. Games Workshop have gotten really good at hiding all of the gaps in their recent minis, but they can still crop up here and there, especially on older miniatures, so it's really good to have some of this stuff in the drawer to fill those gaps. My epoxy clay of choice is milliput, but if you can't find that, green stuff is just as good. And prepare yourself for maybe a slightly controversial opinion here. Gap filling is quite a skill to develop, and if you are really eager to get to painting and you skip the gap filling on your first one or two miniatures, well, I won't tell anyone, it's okay. But you still have to clean your mould lines. Here is another non-essential product that you probably almost certainly want to buy, a hobby mat or a cutting mat. This is just to protect the surface that you're working on when you're building all of your miniatures. And whilst we're on the subject of your desk, get yourself a nice, good quality desk lamp so that you can really see what you're doing. You don't need to spend loads and loads of money on a super fancy one like this red grass one I've got here, but you definitely need to get one that has a CRI of 90 plus or so and a colour temperature of around 5000 Kelvin. Don't worry about what those numbers mean, just look for something that's CRI 90 plus and 5000 Kelvin, okay? And that gets us to our last thing on the modelling list, basing material, and to be honest, this is a whole video all of its own. How many different surfaces are there to stand on in the universe? Well, that's roughly how many different options you have for basing materials. The two longtime favourite cheap options are literal actual dirt from outside, which you are going to need to roast in a low oven for a little while just to make sure it's nice and dry and there's nothing alive in it, and actual literal gravel. You'll probably want something on the finer side with a variety of rock sizes in it. 
But of course, there are also grasses and cork and pre-sculpted bases and miniature-specific products available, and it all really depends on where you want your little guys to be standing. Let's put a pin in this one and come back to it in a later video. Okay, that should be everything you need for the building part of the process. Now we move on to the painting part of the process, and you'll be pleased to hear there are slightly fewer things on this list. I'll start with a sort of hot take, a, a warm take if you like, but I believe in this enough to take all the flack anyone wants to give me. You need to get yourself a wet palette. Well, when I say get one, I probably mean make one. If you've got loads of money to spare, the ergonomics of a pre-made wet palette are way better than the homemade ones, but essentially it's just a tray with something wet inside and some paper, so you can definitely make your own on the cheap. To do that, you will need some kind of shallow-ish container, something to hold water like a sponge or even just kitchen paper, and then some of this stuff, some parchment paper. Now, this stuff goes by a variety of different names. Even within one country, even within one shop, it might be called several different things. But basically, you need an unwaxed cooking paper, something that will let just a little bit of moisture through, but stay more or less waterproof itself. The best way to find the right one, I think, is just to go to your local supermarket, pick up the cheapest parchment paper you can find, try that, see if it works, if it doesn't, go back and buy another one. What this wet palette will do is keep our paints nice and fresh on the palette and it will encourage us to be better painters as we get more experienced and try different techniques. Some people will tell you the paint will last up to 24 hours or even more, but I don't think that's actually true. It certainly should last you around a painting session though. Okay, with the wet palette prepared, we will also need to prime the miniature. And the best thing to do this with, when you're starting out at least, is a spray can. You can get brush on primers and they work fine, but I'll be honest with you, after you've brush primed one or two minis, you are gonna be really, really bored of that. Spray cans are fast, they give you great coverage and a really, really rock solid base to start painting on. You can get hobby brand primers from Citadel or AK or Titan primers or loads of others I'm sure. If you can't find those, just find any decent plastic primer. But what you don't want is etching primer or filler primer. You don't need to do either of those things to your minis. To start off, you will want to get one can of black and one can of white. Next up, the paints. Yay! But also, argh! There are so, so, so many different brands of hobby paint out there now. It would take at least two videos of the same length as this one to review them all, and I certainly haven't tried all of them. So let's try and keep this nice and simple for beginners. One, don't buy GW paints. Two, do buy just about any other hobby brand of paint. Three, one brand that I will vouch for is Vallejo. Let's run through those points one by one, starting with the big one, don't buy GW paints. Now, I feel bad saying this because I think the people at Citadel are working hard to make mostly some really, really good paints, but they have two major problems. One, they are way more expensive than they need to be, and two, the pots are not fit for purpose. And to be honest, while the range is mostly good, they are pretty spotty. There are some superb paints, but there are also some infamously bad ones. So frankly, I think you can just skip the whole lot. Other than Citadel, any of the other hobby brands are a great way to get started. AK Interactive, Two Thin Coats, Pro Acryl, any of them really. If I had to choose one, I would probably choose Vallejo because they are a really consistent and well-priced paint and I started out with those. They come in two flavours, game colour and model colour, but they're more or less the same thing. I have heard lots of people complain about Army Painter, but then I've also heard that they've gotten a lot better recently, and Scale 75 is a bit of a weird paint, so maybe best to skip that one when you're just starting out. And as for the actual colours that you need to pick up, well, we could go into all sorts of crazy stuff about colour theory and mixing and gamuts and all that kind of thing, but as a beginner, you really don't need all that information. So what I would advise you to do is just go out and buy some manufacturer's starter set. They will almost certainly cover you for everything important that you need, and frankly, in the end, the paints that are most useful to you will depend entirely on what you are painting. Don't overthink it too much, don't buy a whole shop's worth of paint, and just pick up a set and get started. 
It's also a good idea to save a little money in your paint buying budget to pick up some GW contrast paints or some Vallejo Express color. These are transparent paints that are really, really useful for lots and lots of different kinds of jobs. And the GW ones are good, but again, a little bit overpriced and in stupid pots, whereas the Vallejo ones are cheaper, the quality is just as good and they come in a decent bottle. Okay, it's been a journey, but we are finally at the last item on the list. The last bit of equipment that I think you need to start your mini painting journey. It is, of course, an airbrush. Nah, just kidding, it's a regular brush. But we are going to end on a potential hot take here because I want you to buy two different kinds of brushes and both of them will probably annoy some people. The first type will bother the snobs and the purists. I want you to go out and buy a set of cheap synthetic brushes. Get a set with a few different sizes. Normally they'll range from around a size 00 up to about a size 3. And while we don't want to buy the absolute cheapest ones out there, spending around £20 or so for anywhere between 3 to 8 brushes is about the right ballpark. While you're there, pick up some cheap makeup brushes as well. There's a technique called dry brushing, and these sort of slightly stubbier, stiffer makeup brushes are really, really useful for that. The second brush I want you to buy will annoy the don't waste money when you're just starting crowd. I want you to go out and buy a size 1 Winsor & Newton Series 7 Kalinsky Sable brush. This single brush is going to cost you about the same or maybe a little bit more than your whole set of synthetic brushes, but it is worth it. I'm really just using the Winsor & Newton brand name here because it is a really, really common, easy to find brush. But what you're looking for is a sable brush in a size that is useful to mini painters. So that's normally a zero or a one. If in doubt, go to your local art shop and have a look at their high quality watercolor sable brushes. So we're getting those cheap brushes because you definitely need something in your arsenal that is rough and ready that you can slop paint around with and not care too much if it gets a bit worn. When you've been painting for a while, these will be your old brushes that have worn out naturally over time. But when you're getting started, you probably won't have anything like that. So just pick up some cheap brushes to do those jobs. The expensive brush we're getting because the old adage that a bad workman blames his tools is utter nonsense. A good work person understands that you get bad results from bad tools, or at the very least you need the appropriate tool for the job. And when you're trying to paint a pupil on an eye that's about two millimeters wide, you need a precision instrument. Yes, the brush is expensive. Yes, it is easy to mess up brushes if you don't know how to care for them properly. And yes, as a beginner, you probably won't get everything that a more experienced painter would out of an expensive brush. But I wholeheartedly believe every painter should have at least one really good brush in their collection. It's gonna save you a lot of frustration, trust me. So don't skimp on that one brush. But how do we actually use all of this stuff? How do we get our mini from flat pack body bits to heroic demigod? How do we care for that expensive brush? Well, for that and a whole lot more, you're gonna have to stick around for the rest of the series. Ask any questions you might have down below. Hit subscribe so you don't miss the next thing in the series. Give it a thumbs up if you think other people should find this video and check the description to see a list of all of the things that I've discussed in the video today. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.